All right, looks like I am live. So for at least six weeks now, billionaire real estate investor and friend of President Donald Trump, Tom Barrick, has been warning about problems in commercial real estate. He was assuring us that his firm was fine. However, over the weekend, and a lot of people were expecting him to probably be at the front of the line for some type of bailout, he did not get a bailout with his firm. So as you can see there on your screen, over the weekend, the real deal, which is New York Real Estate, also, I, uh, which is a New York Real Estate website, but the Financial Times was also reporting that his firm, Colony Capital, defaulted on $3.2 billion in loans backed by hotel and healthcare properties, according to a regulatory filing first reported by the Financial Times. Now, I am on Seeking Alpha's website looking at shares of Colony Capital, which is CLNY on the New York Stock Exchange. It was only down about 11% today. It did not collapse, you know, 30, 40, 50, 60% or more, shockingly. Now, I was warning when people are asking about real estate investment trusts, I want to say over a month ago, maybe it was six weeks ago, when I was doing some shows on it, warning about Tom Barrick's warnings. I thought it would be probably be other firms rather than his own. It's kind of ironic. But I was warning back then about uh, hunting for yields on these real estate investment trusts that there was more shoes to drop because look at all these restaurants, look at all these um, casual sit-down dining restaurants, look at all these bricks-and-mortar retailers, look at all these other uh, either retailers or mom and pop places that cannot pay the rent. Cheesecake Factory couldn't even pay the rent, and they were successful at one point. Although now, uh, who knows if they're doing takeout or delivery? I haven't heard any stories. I suspect their takeout and delivery businesses not doing very well. But these real estate investment trusts, again, this all goes back to the cash flow problem. If you are familiar with real estate investing, Real estate investing, for the most part, unless you are investing in some of the major cities like New York City or Miami or Washington, D.C. metro area or San Jose, San Francisco area, real estate investing is all about cash flows. So this global cash flow problem that is pervasive throughout all levels of society, it is going to hit real estate even more because most real estate investors are all holding the real estate with debt. That is how most real estate investors make a big return. They use a lot of debt, especially commercial real estate investors and developers. President Trump, when he was just a real estate de a developer, he was always heavily leveraged. So Tom Barrick, let me continue with this article, but the real estate investment trusts, not safe yield plays. They were yield traps. Now, some of them might be safe, but you have to do a lot of individual work some of them might not have as much exposure to bricks and mortar retailer restaurants some of the firms that are that are not generating cash flow so tom barrick's prediction that the commercial mortgage market would collapse has now hit close to home the billionaire magnets colony capital has defaulted on 3.2 billion in loans backed by hotel and healthcare properties according to a regulatory filing first reported by the financial times before the coronavirus crisis sent the economy into a spiral this this uh, video is probably going to get demonetized anyway. That portfolio of 157 hospitality and healthcare related properties accounted for three quarters of Colony Capital's real estate balance sheet. However, the company did not specify how many properties were at risk because of the defaults. So, real estate, like I said, real estate investing is almost always leveraged. Almost every single real estate investor, and I know a lot of successful ones, a lot of good rental property owners, they are all leveraged but they, they all had cash flow. Now, I don't know how things have changed in the last couple months, but prior to this, they were getting plenty of cash flow coming in. But, you know, obviously the last two, two and a half months, things have changed. Barrick, a longtime pal of President Donald Trump, in March authored a white paper on Medium, which is a blogging website, predicting that margin calls, foreclosures, evictions, and bank failures stemming from the crisis could have an immediate impact greater than that of the Great Depression on commercial real estate. He called for government support of the industry and a $500 billion taxpayer-funded liquidity injection into the financial system. Apparently, the Fed's bailouts did not properly go to commercial real estate, especially to one of President Trump's friends. Very interesting.
Trump might have been worried about the backlash there, considering the November 2020 elections are coming up. In April, the CEO appeared on Bloomberg Television, claiming that the real estate industry was in dire straits because the government was allowing homeowners and renters to skip payments. That's also affecting the people who handle the payments. So uh, Christopher Whalen, who has Institutional Risk Analyst blog, he's documented it, this extensively in articles over the last couple of months. So the mortgage financers, the people who are involved in the supply chain, the mortgage servicers, excuse me, the mortgage servicer companies skipping payments hurts them a lot. He was talking about 40 billion per month shortfalls for mortgage servicers. So I haven't uh, been keeping up with a lot of the blog articles on all that, but he covers all the details extensively over on the Institutional Risk Analyst blog. He's also a feature, he's been interviewed on Real Vision TV, Hedge Eye, elsewhere. He just had a new interview that was released, I think, on Hedge Eye. Okay, real estate industry was in dire straits because the government was allowing homeowners and renters to skip payments. At the time, Tom Barrick said the number of tenants in Colony Capital's portfolio that paid rent was, quote, amazingly good, but predicted a fall off in May. Well, here we are in May. So it's the chickens have come home to roost. As for its recent defaults, Colony said that it could not guarantee its current talks with lenders would be successful. The investment firm has one billion of cash on hand and tapped into a 600 million credit facility. Colony's chief financial officer, Mark Hedstrom, said the company expects to meet its obligations. Well, clearly, if they defaulted on 3.2 billion in bonds, I don't know how they could meet its obligations. But Warren Buffett's Berkshire Hathaway portfolio has an enormous amount of exposure to commercial real estate. Wells Fargo has the largest, because they bought Wachovia and other investments the last 10 years, has the largest commercial real estate loan book. Wells Fargo is well over a trillion dollars in commercial real estate loans. And there are a lot of reinsurance and insurance companies with enormous commercial real estate exposure. And then you got Warren Buffett and Paul Tudor Jones worrying about future inflation with what the central banks are doing with all the bailouts and the press releases and the size of their balance sheets growing. Pretty crazy that a really good friend of President Trump did not get a bailout. I was told by a lot of people that he was going to get a bailout. A lot of my podcast listeners, not friends of President Trump uh, here in D.C., like, my podcast listeners are like, he's going to get a bailout. Why are you saying that stuff? This was like six weeks ago. They're like, why are you even talking about this? He's definitely going to get a bailout. Uh, it looks like he didn't get a bailout. Probably because the backlash would be too much for the November 2020 elections. Bob says, how could there be any problem in commercial real estate when no stores or businesses are open? Again, this goes back to part of the cash flow problem. Real estate investors have to have cash flow. They have to be able to service their debts, service their mortgages, because almost all real estate is owned with debt. That is how most real estate investors make big returns. Whether you're a rental property owner or you're a commercial real estate owner, you own a building, you own a couple buildings, you own apartment buildings. It's all about cash flow. But guess what we don't have right now? Cash flow. There's an enormous cash flow problem, pervasive throughout all levels of society, and disproportionately, this is going to hurt commercial real estate the most. Well, government and commercial real estate. Oh, I got a super chat. Thank you, David, for the super chat. He says he hopes the Australian property bubble will also burst. Yeah, I saw that interview with Martin North and George Gammon. That was an excellent interview. Shout out to George if he's listening on this live stream show talking about the Australian property market. It sounds like the Australian government, they're all in on trying to prevent that, but you know, we all know what happens with government intervention, that they just make things worse. It's not pure deflation. I wrote an article about this for my Patreon account contributors. There's enormous distortions now in many different markets and prices. The central bankers are causing absolutely enormous distortions governments and central bankers, because they're going to start putting in wage and price controls. They're going to change the tax laws. It's going to be a mess. If you think it's bad now, just wait. It's going to get even worse. We're into Great Depression in 1929 level, uh, level lever pulling. 
rules changing policies. Go and study what really happened, what Herbert Hoover and Franklin Delano Roosevelt, FDR, actually did. Not what the history, not what the generalist history books say, how Herbert Hoover was this evil capitalist, this evil free marketeer and didn't do anything. That's what the generalist history book said. I was a history major in college. That's what the generalist history books and the generalist history classes and the generalist history teachers who loved FDR, worshipped him as a demigod, that's what they said about Herbert Hoover in lectures, that he was this evil free market guy. If you go back and look at what, he, what Herbert Hoover actually did, he was an enormous interventionist. And then FDR lied on the platform to get elected. He was promising a return to the gold standard. He was promising remaining on the gold standard, not leaving the gold standard, much smaller government, cutting taxes. And then as soon as he won the, uh, won the election, he did the exact opposite and doubled and tripled down on everything Herbert Hoover did. Stoic asks if there's more stimulus checks coming. There could be. It depends on the dollar index and how much Congress can get away with. So the dollar index right now is above 100. I just hit the refresh button right before I started the live stream. Show it's at 100.33. The stronger the dollar index stays, the more likely it is that Congress, both political parties, will agree on more spending because they can get away with more. That is how the people here in D.C. think. They are also lawyers, so they want to change the laws. That's their first impulse, is to not only spend, but also change the laws. Because the majority of people here in D.C. are grossly overpaid lawyers. Whether they're government bureaucrats, or lobbyist lawyers, or scumbag politicians in both parties. Corrupt, overpaid, scumbag politicians in both parties. Corrupt, overpaid, hypocritical scumbag politicians in both parties. Pablo says he guessed Tom Barrick will get a bailout. Uh, he hasn't gotten a bailout yet, and it looks like they just defaulted. Now, his shares have not gone to zero yet. Surprisingly, they're only down 11% today. Let me take a look at the stock chart here of Colony Capital. So on February 18th, it was just under $5 a share. It crashed all the way down to about $1.47 on March 18th. It did rally. It's been going, it's been riding the roller coaster now for the last couple months. Ended up a little above $2 and the news just came out. Probably about a week early, it looks like someone got news. Someone got some inside information and traded on that and started shorting the stock. But we haven't had a big collapse yet in the shares again. You'd think, you'd think if they defaulted on $3.2 billion in loans that the stock would have crashed more than 11%. It's interesting. You know, people, the longs are, are probably betting. Pablo, if I had to make an educated guess, the longs probably in that stock are probably betting on a bailout. John says cereal boxes are so thin with cereal they can barely stand on their own due to shrinkflation. Yep, and the people are going to be screaming about deflation the more and more that happens. I have tons and tons of examples at the grocery store with food, portion size, consumer staple items. You're getting less for more dollars or more of your currency. You're getting less goods and services, less purchasing power. Meanwhile, people are screaming about deflation. Like that idiot who started calling me names for days on end before I blocked him. No, I got a super chat, Dimitri. Dimitri says super chats are not working. I, I just got one a few minutes ago. Okay, well, I think that's it for this short little update. I want to thank my Patreon account contributors very much. There's over 900 of them. It is growing very rapidly. There is a lot of research behind the paywall for only $5 a month for the price of a pretty mediocre cup of coffee. You can take a look at some of my research on the oil market, gold and silver miners, precious metal royalty and streaming stocks, uh, uranium miners, 
and other markets. Thank you very much to my monthly PayPal contributors. There's still a few of you, although most of you have moved to PayPal. Uh, excuse me, although my monthly PayPal contributors, although most of you have moved to Patreon because, frankly, it's a better deal for what you chip in. You're getting a lot more content beyond the paywall there. Thank you to people who chip in once in a while. You can go to my website if you want, and you can make a one-time donation through the donation link. And I also take uh, the top six cryptocurrencies if you want to send some crypto as a tip. But again, in my opinion, I would stay away from most real estate investment trusts because you're going to have to find out the individual assets that each one owns and how exposed they are to this commercial real estate bust that looks like it's going to get worse before it gets better. This cash flow problem I've been talking about for the last couple of weeks, maybe a month, it is disproportionately killing commercial real estate because of the debt levels. If you understand real estate investing, you understand the amount of debt that these real estate investors use. And, no, and the, the math, the numbers for real estate investors who are using debt do not work without cash flow. And guess what we don't have right now? Cash flow. So the commercial real estate market, it's going to get a lot worse before it gets better unless the economy restarts and we start to get cash flow which means that people are paying their rent, businesses are paying their rent, businesses are having customers, either buy goods or services or food at restaurants, bricks and mortar retailers. Maybe we're gonna get a little bit of that, but if restaurants open at 20% capacity, 25, 30, 35%, I'm not optimistic because the, the economics of the restaurant, also the conditions of the uh, PPP loan, the SBA loan, payroll protection loan, I think only 25% maximum is allowed to be paid for rent. The majority of it has to be paid on payroll. So this is not going to benefit these holders of commercial real estate holding those on mortgages. They're not going to get enough cash flow to help. So commercial real estate, if I could leave you with one more thing, commercial real estate will be disproportionately killed because of this cash flow problem. We will see if governments will step in with bailouts, although it looks like as of right now, Trump's friend Tom Barrick is not going to get a bailout. Maybe they will in the weeks to come, but we'll see. But it's interesting that they already defaulted on the loans before they got bailed out because a lot of people were telling me, you listen to this podcast, that they're not going to default on anything, that Tom Barrick is a good friend of Trump and that he's going to get a bailout for sure. Well, why did they allow then $3.2 billion in defaulted loans? We'll have to see because you know what? The rules could change tomorrow and then the next day and then the day after that. This is a new normal now. Lots and lots and lots of rules changes. It sucks. You're going to have to keep on your toes. Welcome to dystopia. Again, don't forget to smash the like button or click or tap it. Thank you very much for your time.